first time, the German Touring Car Masters races at Spa. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, or motorsport fans. Welcome to Spa on the great and fantastic racetrack, and I'm really enjoying looking forward what's going to happen. And Heinz Harrell, just one of several drivers in the DTM with past Formula One experience at this track, and they include Scotland's Alan McNish racing for Audi now. Spa is, I think, in every single driver, it's in their top three circuits of the world. And even in the difficult wet conditions like we experience today, you still have a great sensation. But Eau Rouge is always going to live up there in my memory as one of the best corners in the world as well. And there is the famous sweeping right-hander. Difficult in the wet, it's still a favourite of Jean Alaises. To drive on this, uh, on this track, it's a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, uh, nice feeling. A special corner like Le Rouge, where there is a big compression. And uh, you, I have to say, you, you have fun. Yes, so let's ride the track with yes, Christian Up talking in uh, German uh, here. You have to get out of uh, the final hairpin uh, very quickly, La Source, and it's uh, downhill towards uh, Eau Rouge. If it rains, you can drive through in fifth gear, says uh, Christian App, but you're really on your nerves. And then you go uphill through uh, right along. Then there is a short uh, right-hand kink they call uh, Kemmel and uh, heading uh, towards uh, Le Combe. We are still, says Christian Apt here, of course, on the original uh, circuit, up to 250 kilometers an hour, then down to a second gear for the uh, right-hander, the chicane section at Le Combe. Then we plunge downhill again, third and fourth gear. This next corner is uh, very tricky. That's a second gear corner. You have to be very exact, otherwise you can lose time. And then fast out of this section and uh, moving up the gears again to uh, fifth gear. The uh, next curve is also very tricky. Back uh, down the gearbox for that one. Now we have a, a left and uh, right combination of corners. Again, you have to carry as much speed as you can all the time of going downhill. This is a very, very important spot just here. This is uh, a very fast section. And then the next curve is also very difficult. And... Uh, we head back onto the original circuit and uh, passing through uh, Stavolo and then the uh, Blanchemont corner. Having a bit of a twitch there is apt uh, as it goes through Blanchemont and uh, now heading into the bus stop chicane, which has been uh, altered a bit for this year. Quite gentle braking into the bus stop and then uh, neat out and then uh, cross the start finish line and back to La Source. And that was a lap with Christian Apt. Moving on to qualifying, in fact, uh, the man from Kempton, the 38 year old, going very quickly indeed in the 2004 specification Audi A4 DTM. And up supreme in the wet, looking very good indeed. This is going to be an excellent qualifying. And apt will stop the clocks at 233.991. And that will put him in the top three or four. Yes, we noticed at Hockenheim that our car is a very competitive, despite the fact it's a 2004 spec car. I did expect more at the Lausitz ring, but uh, I made mistakes in qualifying. And yesterday we had problems here, fire in the car. The engineers worked the whole night, and I think uh, that I have uh, repaid them. So here is the reigning champion in the new shape, Audi. 
Matthias Ekstrom. Ekstrom are pushing hard, trying to get the power down. Remember, DTM cars only have rear-wheel drive. They're not four-wheel drive out, is these uh, DTM cars? Uh, Mika likes that. As Ekstrom goes second. I mean, it will be a tough uh, race as always, and it uh, will be funny to drive uh, together with Christian at the front, and I think uh, we have a good chance to do a good race tomorrow. But what about this man in his third ever DTM race? Mika Hakkinen, the double world champion, sliding the AMG Mercedes C-Class around. And Mika heading for what looks as if it might be his first pole in this championship. And yes, Hakkinen stops the clock, 232.729. I have to admit this was a total surprise for me. Uh, total surprise, because this morning uh, my performance was not good enough. So I needed to a lot of work to understand what my teammates doing right, because they were performing good. So I look and I look and, and we, we change different things, different things in a, in a car, but nothing dramatic. And uh, and the performance went better and better step by step. And and I give you the one example here, what, what's happening at the moment is, in the dry conditions, I've been now doing quite a lot of testing, quite a few races now. So I have a, I have a experience, so I, I, I'm like climbing up at the moment, uh, climbing up at the moment with the learning curve at the moment in terms of DTM on dry conditions. So today, obviously, because it was wet, I had to start everything all over again to understand how the DTM car performs in wet conditions. And uh, to help with the engineers and looking at the other, other drivers, we really progressed really quickly. Uh, but I didn't expect this. This was, this was just a, one of these more miracles. <laughs> yes, indeed. He's racing under the three-pointed star, Mika Hakkinen, a man with a long career and really getting to grips with this new form of racing, that sensational pole position, but also, of course, the great drive in the previous round of the championship. The DTM is hard work, but tiring. Well, now I'm tired. I have to admit, now I'm really tired. <laughs> I have to admit. But uh, it, it's, it's good because the situation is very relaxed here. You know, the paddock, the feeling is quite relaxed. Things are really organized in Mercedes, and they try to really do everything best for me over here. So I, I'm feeling very comfortable. Uh, and the driving, the car itself is such a good fun, so it gives me great pleasure. Yeah, Mika's whole life has been motorsports since he was just five years old when he first drove a kart. He went on to be the three times Finnish karting champion. He moved into Formula Ford, very successful in Scandinavia, and then in 1988, he won the Opel Lotus Euro Series. Quickly moved on to uh, Formula 3, and in 1991, he won the British Formula 3 Championship. Lotus signed him for the following year for Grand Prix racing. There he is alongside uh, the then team boss, Peter Collins. And in 1993, he drove for McLaren alongside Ayrton Senna. His first Formula One victory came in 1997. He married Urger in 1998. And the same year, he became world champion. And he made it back-to-back -back Formula One victories in 1999. But in 2001, he left Formula One. I started losing my motivation uh, probably a little bit. So it was not good for the team and not good for myself to continue. So it was better to stop and to do something else. <laughs> and in the intervening years, Mika had some fun. He used to do this in Formula 3, I remember, in the paddock at Silverstone. Time to try out a jet fighter. 
Mika also did some uh, rallying, did the Arctic rally a couple of times. Also found out what weightlessness was all about. Mika also in demand for a number of TV Mark commercials, yeah, including this one for Mercedes-Benz. Oh, Mika Hakkinen. <laughs> I expect you'd like to go to Silverstone, wouldn't you? Hmm? No, it's Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> quick, 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 quick. That was close, Boris. That was close. Yeah, several of these adverts, of course, <laughs> with Boris <laughs> Becker. Mika! <laughs> Mama. Is and Diesel? Yeah, ja, sicher. And Sie sind Formel 1 Rennfahrer. Yeah, klar. Yeah, even promoting uh, diesel Mercedes Benz there together with his wife, are uh, yeah. Mick has always kept an active interest in uh, DTM. He had a number of discussions with Mercedes Benz's Norbert Haug about possibly racing a car in the future. But uh, now, in 2005, very much part of the DTM scene. TTM for me is a new uh, challenge. You know, I never won here. I never, I don't know if I never will, but I never won here. Uh, and I have a lot of things to learn. And I want to be successful in DTM and I'm going to work hard to get there. His very first race, of course, at Hockenheim had a stop go penalty and drove back to eighth place at the end. At the Lauschitz ring, he improved to finish third and enjoy life back on the podium. And now he starts on a pole position here for the third round of the series at the magnificent Spa Francochon circuit, just some 20 miles from the border with Germany. Well, Hakkinen on the pole, Ekstrom alongside him on the front row for the third successive race. Christian Apt in the old Audi. Lines up with Marcel Fasler looking good in the Opel. Then Pierre Kaffer going very well. He knows this circuit from sports car racing. And Tom Christensen, Laurent Aiello, and Jean Lacey. And then the next row of the grid, Jamie Green, together with fellow Brit Gary Paffitt. Gary having a huge accident in qualifying. Stefan Mucker with Bernd Schneider alongside him. Then it's Alan McNish and fellow Audi driver Martin Tomczyk, Alexandras Margaritas and Heinz Harold Frensen, Manuel Reuter and Dindo Capello, Bruno Spengler from Canada with Frank Stipler, and they are on the back of the grid. Lights are red, lights go out. All heading for Lassau's hairpin, it can all happen here. And a very, very good start there by the Audi of Ekstrom. Ekstrom certainly accelerating away quicker than anybody else. And now they plunge down the hill past the support pits. Nice to have the track dry again. And Vika Hagenen is in second place. Marcel Fassler has moved up to third. Everyone very closely matched in the DTM, of course. All qualifying within a second and a half of each other. Go on board with Laurent Aiello pushing hard. Remember that uh, the Mercedes are carrying uh, 40 kilos more weight than the Opals. So it's extra. Hackenham, Fasler, Christensen, Apt, Alasi. That's your top six. We ride with Laurent Aiello in ninth place. Aiello pushing hard to get past Kaffa. And we have not had an Opal on the podium yet this season. Indeed, we haven't had one in the points. And Fassler, the Swiss driver, ex-Mercedes driver, looking the uh, fastest of the group again. And uh, just look at the pace of the man in front. The reigning uh, champion in DTM, Matthias Ekstrom. Still lives in Sweden. A lot of these drivers uh, base themselves in Monaco. Save a little bit of tax that way, but... The young uh, Swede likes to live in his uh, native country. And it's uh, Mika Hakkinen who is leading the rest. Christiansen and uh, Fasler. 
battling over third place, and it's Apt, who uh, dropped back a couple of places. Then Alacy, Gary Paffitt in uh, tenth place. Yes, had an absolutely huge accident in uh, qualifying. Qualified 10th, but couldn't actually compete in the uh, Super Bowl competition. That car now repaired. Here they are through the bus stop chicane. And the first lap is over. And three different manufacturers in the first three places. There is your top ten, and extra arms a gap, a huge two seconds. He's pulled out on that opening lap. Magnificent start, that's what helped. Back with uh, Laurent Aiello. That is where you really get the adrenaline pumping as you go through that uh, compression in the middle of the corner. And look at Fasler trying to have a little snap at the heels of the double world champion, Mika Hakkinen. This is the best performance we've had this season from these Opel Vectra V8 GTSs. Opel used to race the Astra in this series. They switched to the Vectra. Now the uh, downhill section, very technical part of racetrack. This was the section that was built uh, 10 years ago or so. And we just uh, look at the start there. It's JB Green who uh, bogged down a little bit and dropped some positions. There you see JB Green on the left-hand side of your screen in the silver Mercedes. And uh, virtually everyone went by him. See that from uh, the perspective of Laurent Aiello. to the last source hairpin and a nudging went on and then very quickly downhill so Matthias Ekstrom is in the lead and I wonder if Mika Hakkinen can do anything about this Mika Hakkinen with all those 11 years of experience in Formula 1 initially with Lotus as we said but then uh, most of it with McLaren End of lap two then, still the lead is two seconds, so Hakkinen has uh, pegged that gap. Fasler is still uh, in third, Christiansen apt a lazy. Remember, pit stops will be coming up probably about lap nine, we're expecting the first one. Two mandatory pit stops always in the DTM. And this superb circuit in the Ardennes, famous of course for the changing weather conditions. And uh, here we have a replay, and uh, Pierre Kaffa and uh, Gary Paffitt having a moment, and uh, Kaffa is uh, spun round in the bus stop chicane. Now uh, Gary leaning a little bit on uh, Pierre Kaffa, and uh, the leader of the championship may get into a little bit of trouble for that. So it's Matthias Ekstrom from Sweden, the man who loves to go rallying when he's not racing, actually part of the Skoda WRC squad these days. Also has his own Mitsubishi Group N car. One of the number of toys he has at home. And I think that Mika Hakkinen is starting to close up a little bit on Matthias Ekstrom, top speeds here at the Spa, somewhere in the region of 250 kilometers an hour in full race trim. And quite a battle going on also further down the field for fifth place. Lazy pushing hard after Christian Apt. But the focus of attention very much here on uh, Mika Hakkinen's pursuit of the Audi, the Red Bull machine. And Fasler certainly hanging on well to that uh, third place. And that will put a smile on the face of 
Volker Stajcek, the boss of Opel, who last uh, weekend was racing an Opel in the 24 hours of the Nürburgring. Next from Hacken and Fassler, Tom Christensen fourth, then it's apt. Alan McNish has moved up into 10th uh, place there, you see the uh, second 20. Dindo Capello at the back struggling a little bit round here. On a circuit he knows very well, the Formula Ball winner. So there you have your top four, and behind that the battle for fifth place with uh, John and Lacey pushing quite hard to try and get past uh, Christian Apt. And the Lacey goes down the inside, Apt shuts the door. Very tricky place to pass is at this downhill section. The new section which uh, basically cut the old circuit in half, but very much uh, has the same character as the original longer track. The original roads of Spa, of course, uh, public roads. This section was built specially to form this uh, bypass, if you will, of the old track. Still a lazy pushing hard, and still a Hacken and he's moving up. And Hacken, that gap is not two seconds anymore. That is absolutely certain. There is Fassler. Here is this battle. Bert Schneider just behind that pair in the Vodafone back car. Fassler goes through. And Jean Alesi still looking at a way to get past Christian Apt, who's been racing an Audi for the best pass of 10 years. Former schoolboy motocross champion in Germany in his early days. And John Alesi, of course, raced many famous cars around this track, particularly Ferrari. And he's trying both sides into the bus stop now. And Alesi on the right line, and Alesi takes it. Perfect uh, manoeuvre by uh, John Alesi, winner of the opening round of this uh, championship. John Alesi, very much a part of the DTM. The end of uh, four laps. The gap now shown as 1.4 seconds as we ride with Christian Apt as he now sees those interesting aerodynamics there on the back of the uh, Mercedes-Benz, developed, of course, by the HWA organization. Christian Apt flying up uh, through Radion. And still everyone very close together. Look at that row of Mercedes-Benz there. One, two, three, four of them. Actually, it's an Audi in the middle of them. And that is apt. Passed by John Alesi. And now we can see exactly how it happened. But John Alesi on exactly the right line. Came out of the left hand, and nice and wide. And uh, dived down the inside. And that's how uh, Christian Apt saw it. And this is what Norman Haug thought of it. That's what uh, Jürgen Apt thought of it. Now with Jamie Green and in the 21 Mercedes-Benz, the reigning European Formula 3 champion, raced at Spa in the past in Formula 3 cars. And uh, Jamie has settled in very well into the DTM. Opal there of uh, Heinz Harrell Friends in the Stern car battling with uh, Martin Tomczyk. Oh, and uh, Heinz Harrell Friends and spins. Now, was he touched by Tomczyk? Hopefully, we'll see that again in slow mo. But another torrid race for Heinz Harold, the man from Munch and Gladbach. His family actually worked in the undertaking business, the funeral directing business. And this is what happened to Heinz Harold. And well, I don't think he was actually tapped by Tom Chick there. If he was, it was a very, very light tap, but it certainly didn't look that way. And Heinz Harold, for instance, just touched the barriers. First pit stop, Tom Christiansen. The fastest pit stops in motor racing you have in the DTM. Look at the clock, 4.8, that previous one, at stop, 6.2 seconds. Watch out as he comes out of the pits here. 
Apt accelerates and he crosses that line in the second of the two white lines and that could bring him a penalty. And uh, we understand that Gary Paffitt has received a stop-go penalty. In fact, he's already served that. That was for that uh, earlier incident. Hines, Harold Frenson then after his spin. And he is at the very last pit and he will uh, be pleased to get some new tyres. And there is a shot of uh, Christian App crossing that uh, white line and that is definitely a verboten. And I suspect he'll be in for a stop-go penalty. But still at the front, it's Matthias Ekstrom, his partner, of course, Tina Turner, the famous uh, rally co-driver, one of the most successful rally co-drivers, lady rally co-drivers in the business now, competing regularly in the FIA Cross Country Cup. A little bit of camera break up there. And some lovely slow-mo of Ekstrom. Look at the sparks coming from the front of the car. See how low they run these machines to the ground. But Hakkinen continues his pursuit at the end of the first lap. Remember, the gap was two seconds. It's come down and now it looks like about one second to me. What can Mika Hakkinen do about this? The flying fin would love to win this into the, the La Sauce hairpin again. That's the scene at the APTA control centre. John Alacy in third position. Yet to make his opening pit stop. Alacy having a good run for Mercedes-Benz, right on the edge through there. These tubular-framed silhouette racing cars with their V8 engines pumping out 400 horsepower are pretty difficult to handle around Spa, but at least the rain has held off, and uh, that's certainly good. And we have heard that Apt will get a drive through penalty. Ekstrom uh, yet to come into his pit. And a gaggle of cars going through Bernd Schneider in the middle of that lot. So there is Christian Apt. Over the radio, he will have been told that uh, he has uh, been given that penalty. I'm sure he won't be at all happy with that. Gary Paffitt apparently... Uh, felt that he was hard done by his penalty for that uh, early clash. So it's still Ekstrom, Hakkinen, neither of those have made their pit stop. And then the long gap to Jean Alesi. And Alesi also well ahead of his pursuers now. So here is Ekstrom. We go on board with Hacken and see how close he's getting. Taking plenty of curve. Now it's difficult to tell from these pictures, but he's very steep downhill. And here is Ekstrom. He will want one of those uh, sub six minute, uh, six seconds, I should say, pit stops as the uh, press set of Dunlops go on. It's a pretty hard tire, is this? And down it goes, and that wasn't that quick. 8.7 seconds, slightly sticky right wheel nut, I think. Held them up a little bit. And that might be all Mika Hakkinen needs. Let's see if his pit crew can uh, better that. Lazy moves up to second place. Christiansen has already made his pit stop. Fazler has made his. But uh, absolutely crucial now, the Mika Hakkinen pit stop. There, the two Red Bull Audis running together. A number of different sponsors on these Audis. Mika and Burnt, that's their uh, pit stop position. And uh, we join Mika Hakkinen plunging through this Ardennes countryside. As we said, only about 
20 miles or so away from the German border. And a crowd of some 25,000 gathered at Spa for this first running of the DTM. Gakkenen with the car with the mural all over the side of it. Up there, the current positions. And I think Hakkenen will be making a pit stop this time. Slow mo of him taking lots and lots of curb. And the car teetering on the edge of adhesion. Such a magnificent circuit is Spa. This is probably the least popular part of it. The bus stop chicane added what, about 10 years ago to slow cars down and Hakkinen is coming into the pits. Down onto the uh, speed limiter for the pits. This will seem like an eternity as he rolls towards the boys from uh, HWA. And they know if they can make a really rapid one, they might might just be able to get him out in front of Matthias Ekstrom and that would be absolutely crucial. And it seemed very clean to me, 4.5, that's an absolutely stupendous pit stop. And Hakkinen, there he is, and there is Ekstrom, he comes out right in front of Ekstrom, and Ekstrom has the momentum, Ekstrom has the heat in his tyres, and Ekstrom will try and go past, Mika blocks him, he won't get through there. And up the hill again. So, thwarted at Eau Rouge was Matthias Ekstrom, and now Hakkinen is up to pace. And that was a crucial moment, absolutely crucial moment in this race. And Mika Hakkinen is in the lead in only his third DTM race. Well, maybe some people had some doubts about Mika's speed, his commitment after three years away, basically enjoying himself. But any doubts like that are now totally dispelled. Acton leads the reigning champion, Matthias Ekstrom in the Audi chases him. Let's look at the slow-mo here of them through a Rouge. And that's what the front of that Audi looks like. And the engineer is channeling all the air for the engine and for the braking ducts and for the aerodynamics through that new large grill, the new shape of Audi. A lot of people didn't like it when it first came out, not as a racing car, but as a road car. And of course, an A4, a hugely successful car, but I think everybody now even prefers the new shape of Audi. John Alasi leads at the moment. He has yet to make his stop. So, Mika Hakkinen, the double world champion, versus Matthias Ekstrom from Sweden, the reigning DTM champion. And there is a bonnet being removed. Expensive bit of carbon fibre, I've no doubt. I think probably made by the DP uh, Composite Company in the UK. And there's the car which is missing it, and it's uh, Bruno Spengler. Spengler, the uh, Canadian, as Jean Alesi makes his pit stop. Lazy winner of the first round and uh, spins the tyres. He goes out 4.7 seconds. And another tremendous stop from the HWA crew. So this is the order now. The pit stops are done for the first round. Hacking and Ekstrom. Christiansen up to third place. Fasler fourth. A lazy Schneider. Aiello McNish up to eighth. Mucker and uh, Tomchik. There is uh, Spengler coming into the pits for a new bonnet, so his uh, stop will take uh, maybe 25, 30 seconds. Depends a little bit how the fastenings have been damaged. And there you see the big air duct taking the air into the Mercedes-Benz engine, custom-built racing engine, and they decided to retire Spengler there and then. So he is out of the race. Stefan Mucca coming in, and, uh, oh! Crash helmet to one of the crew goes flying, and uh, there on the floor, 
Hopefully we're just a bumps and bruises. And there is that bonnet coming off and it goes high into the air and then floats back down again, fortunately behind the two uh, pursuing cars. So a lot of action here at Spa in this third round of the German Touring Car Masters, the DTM. And uh, Mick Ackerman certainly uh, pulling away from uh, the fellow uh, Scandinavians. Scandinavians in first, second and uh, third places at the moment. Mika Hakkinen from Finland. Ekstrom, of course, from Sweden, and Tom Christensen from Denmark. Jamie Green coming into the pits. And Green in a 2005 specification car, but this one not run by the uh, HWA organisation. And uh, side by side here, Laurent Aiello and uh, Bern Schneider. Aiello, the former British Touring Car Champion, gets through uh, a rouge in superb style as uh, Schneider pushes hard. Bert Schneider, DTM champion in 1995, in 97, in 2000, 2001, in 2003. The winning most driver in the DTM. And uh, Schneider now 40 years old. And after two pit stops, there you see the rankings, 11th down to 19th. And Apt dropping well down the field after his uh, extra stop-go penalty. But one of the best scraps seems to be between Aiello and Schneider. Let's see them going through Rouge here, who is the bravest man? And it seemed to be the little Frenchman, Lawrence Aiello. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hakkinen pulling away from the rest of the field. Last lap, 213.3. His best lap, 213.1. So they've always said that Hakkinen was ultra, ultra consistent lap times within a tenth of a second of each other. There's the second place man. He seems to be dropping back now. Martin Tomczyk into the pits in the second of the Red Bull cars. And uh, Martin Tomczyk in the apt prepared machine. Apt, of course, preparing the 2005 cars, the Yoss team running the 2004 cars, which includes, just to confuse matters, Christian Apt as one of the drivers. Hacken and Ekstrom, Christensen, Alasi, Fasler, and Tom Chick. And it's ILO and Snyder. That's the battle we're watching. McNish still in ninth place. We haven't seen much of Allen in uh, this race thus far. But these two really at it. Bernd Schneider trying to find a way past. Spent a couple of years in Formula One racing in 1988 and 89 in the uh, Zaxfeet team. Meanwhile, Margaritas in the orange car there, battling with uh, Christian Apt. And I think maybe I saw Jamie Green going slowly. There is Margaritas and Apt. And that is Green at the back, you see, with smoke uh, coming out of his car and I think more likely coming from a tyre. So it appears that Jamie Green has a puncture. So a disappointment for the young man from Leicester. Meanwhile, Margaritas holding off Apt here, another graduate of the 2004 Euro F3 season. Margaritas, much of that time running with the team run by his uh, father. And, uh, oh, there's Jamie Green just pulled off. Disappointment for Jamie Green then with that uh, puncture, we think. Norbert Haug will be uh, conducting uh, a post-mortem into that problem after the race, no doubt. And there he is actually pulling up. Just trying to see. Yes, you see the puncture on the uh, left front. The car, the tire is shredded. Green out. 
Points battle still continuing between uh, Schneider and Aiello. And Schneider pushing very hard to see if he can find a way by. And Aiello in the Playboy sponsored car. And they head towards La Source. And Schneider tries down the inside, then he switches to the outside, see if he can get a better drive out of the corner. No, Aiello is on the uh, perfect line. And now the uh, dive into Eau Rouge, and Hakkinen's lead now. A huge seven seconds. Ekstrom and uh, Christiansen, then it's a lazy. Still that Scandinavian one, two, three. This battle is pretty furious, I think. It's uh, again, Bert Schneider tries to uh, look down the inside, and uh, another bit of rubber we saw flying off in the background. I think that was coming off Adam McNish's car. And I think McNish may have a puncture. Just saw a little bit of rubber peeling off. The tires we knew might be an issue around here. Now, here is a slow mo. That is Schneider with the yellow mirrors chasing the Playboy car of Laurent Aiello. And, well, that one didn't work. And still the battle continues. Seventh and eighth positions. That's Alan McNish's car and the tyre is off, as you can see. And another disappointment for the former winner of Le Mans. Toyota driver in Formula One, the Renault test driver. And McNish there, pulling out of the race. And I know he isn't a great fan of these tyres. Everyone on the same rubber though, it's the same for everyone. Fassler coming under quite a bit of pressure here from uh, Tom Chick. Well, that battle is going to go right into the La Source hairpin. And Tomchik tries the outside line. And, uh, well, they accelerate side by side down the hill. And now they head towards Eau Rouge, and this could be exciting. And this is only for the Brave. And the Opal just edges ahead. And they go through the corner, line astern. And Fassel looking to score Opal's first points of the season. Oh, a big shot for Bernd Schneider. Also in Eau Rouge. And look at the car, absolutely destroyed. Schneider is moving in the car. A lot of safety features on these. Mercedes there is Norbert Haug. And Schneider gets out of the machine. He's going to be bruised and battered. He's going to feel that on Monday morning. Well, what exactly happened here? Well, a little nudge from the Opa of Laurent Aiello. And there you see it all goes wrong. It started with the nudge and Schneider into the barrier. I got a nice fight with Laurent, uh, but they are very difficult to, to overtake. They are 40 kilos lighter than we are. I came out close uh, next to La, uh, out of Lausanne. He had a little mistake, and we went side by side to Rouge. And he hit me a bit, uh, and I touched the curb inside, and I spun immediately, and I flew into the tire wall. And I'm really happy to survive. Let's see it from another angle, and just so much G there, so much high speed, and bang into the barrier. I think it was a racing accident between Laurent, Laurent Aiello and Bernd in a very fast uh, corner, the Eau Rouge. Um, the safety concept of the DTM cars is working perfectly. I think the car is uh, finished. I, I'm not sure whether we can repair it. But most importantly, Bernd is OK. This is the best message of the whole weekend. Yeah, we see it again. There he goes in, the bodywork falling off. and. Well, I doubt very much they'll uh, repair that. There's Bernd Schneider 
medic trying to help, but I don't think he really needs that. Pretty cool character is uh, Bern Schneider. And some liquid uh, from the radiator, I suspect, running towards uh, the track. Meanwhile, at the front, we're on to the last lap now. So, Mika Akkonen heading towards a famous victory, goes through a rouge for the last time. There is his nearest pursuers, and it's Matthias Ekstrom and Tom Christensen, the two Scandinavians, in their Audis, making it uh, a Viking 1-2-3 here, if it stays this way. And it's certainly looking as if it's going to. So there is uh, Tom Christensen in the forthcoming month seeing if he can make it seven Le Mans victories, six in a row. Currently, the total is six victories and five in a row. And Christensen will be happy to be on the podium here. He did have a win in the DTM last year. And those V8 Mercedes sound absolutely superb. And Amika Akkonen qualified well in the wet. Was beaten off the line, remember, at the start by Matthias Ekstrom. Ekstrom had a slightly long pit stop. Hakkinen had a magnificent sub five second pit stop. That put him in the lead and since then he's just pulled away from the rest of the field. Oh dear, Manuel Reuter, his car has stopped on the very last lap. But this is all about Mika Hakkinen former world champion, heading towards his first DTM victory. We haven't seen much of Gary Paffett, but I think Gary is just inside the points, or will be on this last lap, and that should keep him at the top of the table. But it's a pretty close fight for the rest of the positions, as Mika Hagnan to the wave, unbelievably, of Audi flags, wins it for Mercedes-Benz. And Audi's finished second and third. And Mick Akkonen has won his first DTM race. Still battles going on. And here is the Opel of uh, Marcel Vasler heading home. Martin Tomczyk. Tomczyk presses him all the way to the checkered flag. But it's Vasler who finishes there in sixth place. Let's hear now from Tom Christensen. It's nice and it means that to be on the podium means that Audi have done uh, a good car. It was a great race car and it was great to go from the third row and, and being able to, uh, to join Mika and Eki on the, at the podium. There, confirmation of the final victory margin, 4.258 seconds. And as I said, Gary Paffett coming home in eighth place. And the rest of the field, including the various cars which stopped Once I came out on the track, I was behind Mick, I realized that uh, the new tires I had for one lap gained a lot of time back, but uh, once he was in front, he could pull away, and uh, from that on, it was very difficult. This is the driver's table, and very close at the top after three rounds, Paffitt still leads, Hakkinen, Ekstrom, and Alesi all on 17. It, it's, it's a good, good result. <laughs> it's a fantastic result. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it did not come easily, you know, it, it's been a really hard work behind all the time. But the team generally just has been a fantastic for me. They've really been helping me, all the, all the drivers been helping me. We all together, we had, a, we had a very good spirit together at the moment. That, that, that keeps pushing forward all the time in developing a car and, and making better results. And uh, even the extra weight what we have, you know, it doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to affect. Uh, so it's, it's great, a lot of reasons to be happy. Yes, indeed. Congratulations to uh, Mika. Look at the uh, team's championship points here. Of course, we have two different Mercedes-Benz teams, first and second, and then uh, two Audi teams. And three races in the book so far, and it's Mercedes-Benz winning all three races. But let's now hear from Marcel Fasler. At the moment, I'm a bit happy with the fifth place, but we cannot be happy with just with a fifth place because we have a, an Anutash with... A, with the, with the kilos in the car, with the weight. 
and uh, we are not consistent enough uh, during the race. We have to work on that and then uh, we can maybe be closer to the podium. But here's the man that's closest to the podium of all. He stands on the top step. His first victory since winning for McLaren of the 2001 US Grand Prix. The team result is uh, very good. Uh, Matthias was doing a really fabulous race. Tom was very strong. Uh, Martin was coming from 13th to 6th, which is a big achievement. And also Christian up ended up in the top 10. So a big result for the team, a good result for the championship points. So I'm looking forward to the next races. But what about the man who brought Mika Hakkinen back into racing, back into the DTM? Let's hear now from Norbert Haug. Mika, he was excellent. He was on pole position, did fastest race lap one in his third, only third DTM race. I mean, that is very imp imp uh, impressive stuff, I have to say. Hi, I'm Gary Peffitt. I'd like to say goodbye from Spa and see you in the next race in Brünn. Yes, indeed, Brun, or sometimes known as Bruno, a superb circuit in the Czech Republic for round four of the DTM. Well, it's goodbye from Gary, and it's goodbye from me, Andrew Marriott. See you next time. <laughs>